Hi, welcome back to the workshop. This is the Denis Lukianov Ogto Killer commission that I've just completed for Cameron. Uh, I thought I would take you guys through some of the features and just give you a little bit of an overview of the hilt itself. So Cameron, when you receive your hilt, you'll get it in the obvious box that it came with. Um, I've left the speaker like foam mesh stuff in there because I haven't used it because otherwise you can't see the crystal chamber in there. So here's the hilt in all of its glory, all of its unweathered glory. Uh, just we've left the bottom part because we didn't discuss uh, doing any weathering there. Um, basic features of the hilt. Let's, uh, let's have a little look around and, and turn the hilt on. So to unscrew the hilt, you just sort of hold this bottom section and twist this ring with your fingers like that. And then this should slide right off. And then there's a kill switch to turn the hilt on. Um, so just having a look around the outside of the hilt, I have done a little bit of polish work with a few of the aluminium pieces like the shrouds here, just to sort of buff out any of the scratches, um, as well as the copper ring to restore some of the uh, oxidation that was on there. Is it oxidation or oxidization? Who knows? Um, anyway, so uh, the rest of the hilt has just been just cleaned up a little bit and uh, installed with all of the fonts and everything that you asked for. So let's have a quick look at how this works. So just click the button once, turn it on. And you can see it's fully uh, active with Smooth Swing version two. And it has clashes. Um, and it has force push, which is a little bit hard to do. There you go, but once you get the sort of motion like that correct, then uh, then you can get that force activation mode thing. Um, so while the saber is on, uh, Cameron has asked me to add the color change mode, which you can do by sort of, you hold the button, and then if you rev it like a sort of motorcycle handle, so hold the button and then rev, it goes into color change mode. And what this will do is now when you twist the hilt, you'll see that the color changes and it will change the color of the blade as well. So I'm focusing on the crystal just for now. So you twist it and there's endless amounts of colors in there for you. So you can twist it to whatever the color you like. Let's say this sort of weird cyan color and then click the button once and it will play a sound to say that that color is now locked in. Um, so with this being a one button saber, there's no blaster blocks or anything like that. There's sort of no easy functionality to do that. Um, personally, I, I always prefer to be able to click the button once and have it on, click it once and have it off, rather than some people who hold it and it comes on and hold it and it comes off and then that allows them to click the button for blaster blocks. But I've sort of found that to be ineffective and kind of a bit boring because you have to hold it and then you're sitting waiting for your saber to turn off. and. This is kind of no point. Um, so uh, that is the basics of the outside of the hilt. Let's just have a quick look at it with a blade installed as well. So to install a blade, take a 1.5mm uh, Allen key, which will be inside the chassis, Cameron, after you have added whichever Allen key you feel like. Uh, so there is a little small grub screw up at the top here. Give it a couple of turns just to loosen the blade plug and activated it by accident there because it's got force push activation so if you if you sort of thrust it along the uh, axis like that then it'll turn on so with the blade plug out you can now see the uh, neopixel connector in there so let's try out a blade so i've coded this in preparation for the 122 pixel uh, blade that Cameron already has, but I'm just testing it with a little shorter blade right now. So there we go. That's how it looks like with a blade. And this is the color change in motion as well. So if you now twist it, you'll see that the color changes to whatever you want. And then if you click the button again, it locks it in place. Just like that. So to take the blade out again, you just pull and then put the blade plug back in 
to protect the NeoPixel connector. And then tighten up that grub screw. And then you are good to go. So, let's have a look at arguably one of the most exciting parts about this hilt, which is the chassis. Like I said, just twist this ring to get to the body of the saber. And here we go, this is the chassis. So this is the chassis that was made in collaboration between me and uh, Shadowfoil Props. And to remove the chassis, there are no latches or anything, it's just held in place with friction with the MT30 connector. So you just pull and the whole chassis comes out like this. And here it is. Here is the whole thing in all of its glory. So let's just reset the saber like that. So what you have here is you have these two little accent LEDs that don't really indicate anything, but they're inspired by the uh, cave scene episode six Luke saber. Um, these seven, yeah, seven <laughs> LEDs here indicate the battery life while the saber is uh, currently not activated. When you turn the saber on, it sort of implicates pushing power up into the crystal chamber. And as you can see, the motor there still spinning, looking good as always. So to turn that motor off, if you're kind of annoyed by the noise at any point, what you can do is when the saber is on, if you hold the button and swing, it will do a couple of beeps and then the motor will turn off. And the motor is quite loud, so if you ever feel the need to turn the motor off, you now have that option. And then just do the same to toggle it back on again. So there you go, there is a quick look at the chassis. Uh, here is the kill switch, just sort of in the middle of the saber here. And you've got your battery here, uh, which I'll swap out for the one, <laughs> the one that I've actually ordered for you. This is just one of mine at the moment with a uh, Skywomper uh, battery skin. Um, but the battery can sort of be pushed out from the base here and it loads in with the negative facing towards the top of the hilt. It's kind of a weird way of doing it, but with the way the chassis is designed, you have to have the positive at the bottom here. So you put the battery in, the positive at the bottom, and then snap it in like that. Uh, you, have a, you have access to your profi board, uh, USB slot and SD card there if you ever want to change anything on there yourself. Um, if you like, Cameron, I will send you the config file if you ever feel like you want to make adjustments for it. Um, yeah, so the only other thing to have a quick look at is under the board cover, you've got the accent LED strip and insulated profi board there. There's not really much point to taking this board cover off, but, you know, it's magnetic anyway, so it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, and that is the basic overview of the actual chassis itself. So let's get it back in the hilt and have a look at some of the functions of the Sabre. So I said functions, I actually mean fonts. Um, so first of all, we've got the uh, Jedi Fallen Order, uh, yeah, Jedi Fallen Order Magenta font on here. which has the classic Jedi Fallen Order blade style and a crystal chamber to match it. Oh, I just wanted to mention actually one extra thing that I've just remembered. There is a volume menu for the saber. So if you want to access that, you hold the button while the saber is off and it plays a little sound like that. If you want to turn the volume down, you can click the button and you hear a beep indicating the volume. If you want to turn the volume back up again, you can do that sort of motorcycle rev gesture. And that will turn the volume back up. And then if you want to lock the volume in place, just hold the button for about a second and then release it and then it'll play a sound to indicate that the volume is locked in. Um, so, to get to the next font, you also need to do that sort of motorcycle rev gesture. Hello, Master. It's been a while. So here we have the Ahsoka Clone Wars. I can't remember if it's Clone Wars or thingy. Uh, Mandalorian font. But it's got the white blades, so there you go. Uh, Cameron, if you want me to change any of these before you, uh, before I send the hilt off to you, then uh, just let me know on Facebook and I'll, I'll change these all around for you. So, having a look at the next font. Darth Revan. 
We have the Revan font. It's a little bit tricky to swing the saber in this setup, but oh well. Uh, we'll we'll see how this goes. So yeah, there's the Revan font. Just a simple wonder. This is the uh, font from Star Wars Visions, the dual font. I believe it was the Ronin version you asked for. I might be completely forgetting that, but anyway, here's the font. Of course, with Crystal Chamber to match on all of these. So, to the next font. Stretch out with your feelings. We have the, uh, it's like, a New Hope training or something like that. I can't, I can't remember the exact fonts, but they're all on here. That's another thing as well. You can do the motorcycle rev gesture to turn the saber off as well. So this is the Death Star font. So what you might have just noticed just then is that the ignition looked like it started way too late but that is because I'm currently using a small blade rather than the blade that's probably about this long uh, on Cameron's actual hilt uh, and it's kind, of a, a, it's kind of compensating for that extra distance on the blade so the, the retractions are going to start a little bit late if you pay attention to this bit but Let's just not worry about that. So, anyway, on to the next font. The Dark Saber. This is... It belongs to you. Oh. This is obviously the Dark Saber font. There we go. And next one. You want me to put the hammer down? We've got the Thunder God font from Kyberphonic. And what's next? Ah, and we're back to the start. So all the fonts will sort of go in a loop. So you'll start with the magenta, you'll go through the same order that I have just done, uh, and then you'll come back to the start. I believe if you want to go back a font, you can hold the button and uh, do the rev motion while it's off. You want me to put the hammer down? Yeah, and that will go back a font uh, in case you go a little bit too far. I mean, you can just cycle all the way through if it's easier, but you, you have that option to go back a font. Uh, if you're interested. So yeah, that pretty much covers all of the details of the Sabre. Um, Cameron, I hope you're happy with your commission. Uh, let me know if there's anything you want me to change before I send this hill out to you. And yeah, thank you everyone for watching. I will see you in the next video.